The story of the African-American experience in Delaware begins in the earliest days of New Sweden and weaves through centuries of struggle and perseverance. This rich history is told in the Journey to Freedom exhibition at the Jane and Littleton Mitchell Center for African-American Heritage, where interactive displays and multimedia technology tell stories of community, courage, sorrow, celebration, injustice, and resilience. Anthony Swartz, also known as Black Anthony, was an enslaved man brought to the New World by Swedish settlers on board the Fogelgrip in 1639. Dutch and English settlers would continue to bring enslaved Africans to Delaware's shores for centuries to come in order to increase profits on the farms and factories of the colonies. African Americans fought alongside Europeans and Native people in the American Revolution, but did not find freedom when that war was won. Several generations later, in the years leading up to the Civil War, many African Americans joined with Quaker leaders like Thomas Garrett to challenge the legitimacy of the slave labor economy on ideological, moral, and religious grounds. At the same time, they were working underground to free black men, women, and children escaping the South. This was a time when black families were creating their own spiritual spaces and experiences, often worshiping in secret. Black preachers offered a message of spiritual freedom and deliverance, and churchgoers expressed their faith in a mixture of Christian hymns and West African spirituals that grew into the singing and praying bands, one of the oldest forms of African-American worship in Delaware and Maryland. African-American men from Delaware continued to serve in the segregated armed forces during the First World War despite being denied their full rights at home. I am proud to say that I was a member of the first colored artillery that was gotten up in the U.S. I must give the French people great credit in regards to good treatment that they gave our colored troops. We left them with much regret. Delawareans Elwood Roy, Littleton Mitchell, and John T. Lewis served in World War II under similar unequal conditions. By the 1950s, Cracks were showing in the idea that things separate could ever be equal. Attorney Lewis L. Redding took the Delaware Board of Education to court and challenged the conditions that black students had to overcome to attend class every day. He won. I conclude from the testimony that in our Delaware society, state-imposed segregation in education itself results in the Negro children as a class receiving educational opportunities which are substantially inferior to those available to white children otherwise similarly situated. The Journey to Freedom exhibit celebrates renowned African Americans in the arts, featuring Delaware Poets Laureate Al Mills and Namdi Chukwocha, jazz musicians Boise Lowry and Clifford Brown, and artists Edward L. Loper and James Newton. But it also offers a critical and sobering look at a history full of discriminatory practices and inequality. Those forces came to a head after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in April of 1968. In the weeks that followed, protests in Wilmington led to smashed windows and burning buildings. Governor Charles Terry called in the National Guard, beginning a nine-month-long military occupation of the city that remains the longest in an American city since the Civil War. It was finally ended when Russell Peterson defeated Terry and recalled the National Guard on Inauguration Day. Today, members of Delaware's African-American community are leaders in politics, medicine, law, business, and the arts. They continue to build community through churches, volunteer organizations, and clubs. Nonprofits like the Christina Cultural Arts Center in Wilmington and Sankofa African Dance Company in Dover provide young people with arts education and opportunities to learn about African traditions in the arts. The Jane and Littleton Mitchell Center for African and American Heritage collects studies and preserves the history and heritage of Delaware's African American community and the racial and social justice program at the YWCA Delaware strives to develop diversity, equity, and inclusion practices to break through institutional patterns that continue to lead to injustices in our world today.